Hurricane Katrina was just a big storm to some, to those who were in her path, and to those who with friends and family directly affected by her fury. Ten years means nothing in being able to forget the pain, the anguish, the death and destruction that she left behind. In the days following Katrina, more than 30 bodies were found in Memorial Hospital. And questions about exactly how they died began to emerge. Was it rising flood water, lack of electricity, unbearable heat, or was someone actually responsible? In the gripping New York Times bestseller, Five Days in Memorial, Life and Death in a Storm-Ravaged Hospital, our next guest details what she learned in the more than 500 interviews she conducted and what in her research ultimately ignited a homicide investigation. Let's welcome the author, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist and physician, Dr. Sherry Fink. Dr. Fink, thank you so much for being here. And when we read just a little bit about this book and a little bit about the tragedy, I think what you're struck by, first of all, is, is doctors having to make those immediate decisions, those snap decisions, who lives and who dies. We never think about that. We always think that when it comes to hospitals, they're ready for things like this. But Katrina just overwhelmed the system, correct? It did. And in some ways, that's the very concept of a disaster, is that it puts us in these situations where we perceive that the needs are much greater than the resources. And then these kinds of decisions, these what they call triage or prioritization decisions, have to be made. In this case, it started with simply who gets a spot on a helicopter in a hospital that's about to lose all power. Just imagine that, an American hospital so dependent on technology suddenly all the power is gone. Patients depend on that for their survival. I would imagine that it had to be very difficult to get doctors to talk to you about this because it is a very closed society. And what we're talking about here are bodies and no one knew where they came from. How did you find somebody actually willing to go on record? Well, it, it took a while, and as you pointed out, this ignited very early on. You know, not everybody was comfortable with some of the decisions that were made. So first you had those triage decisions, who gets put on a helicopter first, and then when all the power f went out, people were in a very desperate situation. It took days for that rescue to come, and some of the staff really told me that they felt that they couldn't save everybody. And then there was this decision about giving the patients medicine uh, that in some cases was intended, some of the doctors told me, to hasten their deaths. And you're absolutely right. How do you get somebody to tell you about it? Well, there had been a murder investigation. There had been a doctor arrested accused of second degree murder. She was ultimately not indicted. A grand jury was very sympathetic to her because of the larger circumstance of Katrina. But over time, some of the staff who participated, other doctors and nurses, they did speak with me. And they actually felt like what they did was right. And so I think they spoke because they wanted to sort of tell this story, hopefully with the idea that we learn from it, that, that these things never do happen again, that medical professionals, patients, you know, family members are never put into such a horrific circumstance. In that instance of having to give patients basically lethal doses of medication. The doctor implicated in the overdose, deaths, uh, the overdose deaths is Anna Poe. Now, a 2006 interview about her conduct at Memorial, here's what she said. I did whatever, whatever was humanly possible that I could possibly do to take care of these patients, and not only the patients, but their family members, the nurses, their family members. I mean, we were all working as a team, and we were all taking care of each other. So I don't think there's, there's anything else I could have done because I gave 110% of myself to doing what I thought I needed to do. Do the doctors to this day believe they did the right thing when you hear something like that and knowing the criminal investigation, regardless of what people say, that they believe they had to do what they did and they feel satisfied with it, I guess. They're at peace with it. I, I think, you know, Dr. Poe has always said just what you heard her say. That is her take on it. And, you know, it, it's very interesting because in some cases, the ethics of this, the legality of this, all rides on the simple question of intentionality. Did they intend to make the patients comfortable, which is what Dr. Poe has already o always maintained? Or did they intend to hasten patients' deaths? In America, in you know, our current medical ethics, our current legality, that is not considered okay. And there were some doctors, unlike Dr. Poe, who said, you know, 
we did intentionally hasten death. This was an unusual situation. They felt it was right. There are others who feel like, you know, it was an extreme circumstance. Maybe we shouldn't judge these doctors per se. Maybe they don't belong in jail. But this is not maybe something that we want to be repeated in the future. Because when you cross that line, what we found in this case were that two dozen patients received these drugs and died on that day. And you know what? According to some of the the staff who took care of them, they may not all have, you know, been on the verge of death. Some mm, of them, perhaps the one in particular comes to mind, could have been saved. There's the certain point that we have to still consider in this. I want to recommend that people, certainly coming up here on the anniversary of Katrina, read this. Five days at Memorial, life and death in a storm-ravaged hospital, a fascinating detail. Dr. Sherry Fink, we want to thank you so much for being here. Stay with us. The fastest 60 Minutes of News continues.